This is the story of Henry Lovegood. That's not Henry. Ah, this is Henry. Henry lived a simple life. But simple as he was, so did he live in discipline, upright character, and profound cleanliness. But on this day, a Sunday like any other, Henry would make one fatal mistake. It wasn't in the way he meticulously prepared his breakfast. It wasn't in the way he meticulously ate his piggy toast. But rather it was in the way he prepared himself, his very soul, for that one fateful Sunday. Oblivious to what awaited him, Henry left his home, never to return the same. For you see, Henry had set his own trap. He'd rung his own bell. And now the bell tolled for him. Don't be like Henry. Don't get left behind. Set your clocks back for daylight savings. Robert Farley, you got left behind too? that we are able to lift our voices and come together and worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Would you stand with us, please, as we sing together? We worship the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging sea. My God, he holds the victory. Of the Lord, let's join the house of the Lord today, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Oh, oh. We shout out your praise. We sing to the God who heals. We sing to the God who saves. We sing to the God who always makes a way. As He hung upon the cross and He rose up from the grave, my God still rolling stones away. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise, there's joy in the house of the Lord, our God is surely in this place, we won't be quiet, we shout out your praise. The beggars, now we're royalty, we were the prisoners, now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. Cause we were the beggars, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Today, and we won't be quiet. We 
we shout out your praise there's joy in the house of the lord our god is surely in this place we won't be quiet we shout out your praise there's joy in the house of the lord there's joy in the house of the lord today and we won't be quiet we shout out your praise there's joy in the house of the lord our god is surely in this place and we won't be quiet we shout out your praise. We shout out your praise. Father, thank you for this morning, this time together. Lord, it is so good to be in the house of the Lord. Father, in all that we say, all that we do today, I pray that you will receive the glory, the honor, and the praise. You have beckoned us here this morning, Lord, not for ours, but for you, Lord, that we can come together and lift up your precious name. So thank you, Father. Thank you for this, another opportunity that you've given to each one of us to come before you with praise and worship. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you turn and, and greet someone this morning? Good morning, church. Happy last day of October. Does anybody think that October flew by? It's hard to believe that October is at the end, and here we are going into November and into the holidays. I want to say good morning to you, welcome you this morning into the house of the Lord. We're so glad that you're with us this morning for worship. If you are a guest with us for the very first time, and I know there may be one or two of you that are here for the very first time this morning, we want to say welcome to you. And if you have a smartphone, you can take that smartphone out and you can text the word welcome to 509-309-0958. Again, that's 509-309-0958. Text the word welcome and uh, we'll be happy to get a message to you as soon as you fill that out. So thank you for being here. We're glad that you've joined us this morning for worship. I want to let you know some upcoming things that are taking place. And that very first thing is today. Today is the fifth Sunday of October, and we are having a pot blessing after the service. How many of you have already prepared something? Awesome. Bless How many of you have heart not prepared something? That's Bless okay. your pea picking heart. I'm so glad you all are going to come, and we're going to have dinner together. That's what that's a, that's what KFC is for, right? Yeah. And Super One Deli. So if you have not... How many fixed a dish? Let me see your hand. That's what I thought. That's what I... But if you didn't, you can always run and grab something. Or if you didn't, you can just stay enjoying us anyway because we believe in a God that performs miracles and he can expand food, right? right. Amen. So please join us after the service today down in the multipurpose room as we have a time of fellowship together. I want to let you know that Wednesday nights we're doing our dinner at 5.30. Our family nights have returned. Um, how many of you have been able to participate in that this fall? Awesome. We eat dinner at 5.30 here in the multipurpose room, and so come and join us if you can. And then at 6.30 we join up here in the sanctuary for a time of worship. We sing some of the classic hymns uh, for about 15 minutes, and then we break into our connect groups. And we have connect groups for all ages, for the kids all the way up through middle school, uh, high school, young adults, and into adults. And we just finished the study, a uh, six-week study called Relatable on Relationships. And we are going into a study that I'm personally really excited about. It's called Mysteries of the Messiah. This last week, my husband and I got to take my mom home back to Boise. And on that long drive, we got to listen to an interview with the author of this series, which is Rabbi Jason Stobel. He is a Messianic rabbi, believes in Jesus as his Lord and Savior, and believes that the Bible, the Old Testament, reveals Jesus as the Messiah from the very beginning, the very first word actually, in the beginning of Genesis all the way through to today. And he takes those uh, insights and shares them with us all the way through the Old Testament. So it's a six-week series called Mysteries of the Messiah. We hope that you'll join us for that. 
And it's really an awesome study, everybody, because it, it lets us kind of jump into uh, <clears throat> areas that I don't think we've, we've really thought about from the very beginning of, t of time to Revelation. It gives Kay and I an opportunity to share with you guys. And it's a very, can I say intimate time? It's, it's, it's a very special time um, as, we, as we discuss. And we don't break into small groups, so you don't have to get one-on-one -on -one with somebody else. But you just ask questions. And if you want to answer, you can answer. If not, uh, we will have notes for you. So I am really looking forward. I'm looking forward to Wednesday night. Um, and so I hope that you all come. And that uh, we'll just see what the Lord has for us. Also, want to let you know that our children are going to begin working on their Christmas program, and we'll be doing that as well on Wednesday evenings as well as Sundays. And so, if you have a child or grandchild or a friend that you know would like to participate in our children's program, please bring them on Wednesday nights and Sunday mornings, and uh, we'll be rehearsing for that. One last thing on the mysteries of the Messiah, um, Rabbi Jason Stobel. How many of you have seen The Chosen? So Rabbi Jason Stobel is a um, advisor to the Chosen about historical Jewish and um, Israeli history, and so um, it's a great it's a great study. So I hope that you'll join us for that. Kids, we're going to let you go back to your time of worship with Miss Kelly in the Kids Zone at this time. Yep, y'all can go. You were the word at the beginning, one with God. In glory in creation, now revealed in you, I Christ. What a beautiful name it is! What a beautiful name it is! The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is! Nothing compares to thee. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. He didn't want heaven without us. So Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great, your love was greater. What could separate? name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is, nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is. the bones of sin and grave. Heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory, for you are raised to life again. You have no rival, you have no stand against what a powerful name it is the name of Jesus what a powerful name it is the name of Jesus what a powerful name it is the name of Jesus Jesus. 
between us. How high a mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the light. And through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine how great a mercy what heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross is spoken, I am forgiven. The King of kings calls me King. Savior, I'm yours forever, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my
before him there will be a day when death will be no more standing face to face with him who died and rose again holy holy is the lord and we pray we pray in desperation Songs of faith, we sang through doubt and fear. And in the end, we'll see that it was worth it. When he returns to wipe away, there will be a day when all will bow before him. Yes, there will be a day when death will be. Face to face with he who died and rose again. Holy, holy is the Lord. And on that day we join the resurrection and stand beside the heroes of the faith. And with one voice, a thousand generations. Sing worthy is the Lamb who was slain. And on that day we'll join the resurrection and stand beside the heroes of the faith. And with one voice, a thousand generations. Sing worthy is the Lamb who. such a time as this. Father, as we stand here this morning, it's a mixture of 
hearts filled with joy, hearts filled with sadness, and only you know, Lord, which hearts those are. You know your children. You know your children. Father, there may be some here this morning who just want to run away and hide. I pray and I thank you, Father, that they came to church this morning, that they felt the safety of being here, Father, when everything within their being said, I just want to run. Lord God, we talk about the joy of the Lord being our strength. We talk about the power of the Holy Spirit. We talk about amazing grace that we can't even fathom or understand the mercies which are new every morning. But there are times, Lord God, when it seems like the bottom just keeps falling out. That our prayers are just hitting the ceilings, Lord. And this morning, I pray for that person that may be here today. That, Lord, they will know that greater are you. Greater are you that dwell within their hearts than the enemy that dwells in this world. Not even the gates of hell, even though they seem to be prevailing, can prevail against you. Father, you have called us to gather and to pray. We thank you for salvation. We thank you for grace. We thank you for your mercies. We thank you for your precious healing touch. You are a great God. And there is no doubt in my mind, you love us, Lord God. We've got to remember we live in a fallen world, and the enemy wants to take away the effectiveness of our salvation, wants to take away the joy and in Jesus' name, we rebuke that. In Jesus' name, right now, Father. For we live in a fallen world, and the enemy wants to defeat us. He's not going to do that today, Father. For we are standing in strength and in numbers, and we are gathered together, lifting up the name of Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for loving us. Thank you for giving us your precious Son to die on a rugged cross. Thank you, Father, for the gift of life abundantly. And we will praise you and we will thank you and we will lift up and hold up the arms of soldiers that are tired. We will agree in prayer and we will not give up. Body of Christ, do you agree with me this morning? We will not give up. We cannot give up. The time is too short, and God is calling us to action right now, calling us to action as a body of believers, to stand in our communities, to raise our voices for the unborn, to be able to thank God that we have a voice to speak and the energy to go forth and to say, my God is alive. My God is not dead, and his son is no longer in that tomb. He is risen. He was only there for a few days. He is alive. He dwells within our hearts. He reigns on high, and we reign with him. Father, thank you. Thank you. Before we bring our request to you, I just thank you. And for that one who may be here who's just feeling the weight right now, may they start praising you. May they start thanking you for what you have done, knowing what you are going to do, what you continue to do, Lord God, in our lives. And we will give you the glory. And we will give you the praise. Thank you, Father. We pray this morning for the churches in our valley. We pray, Father, for the pastors to preach the word. And not to shrink back or to faint, but to take that word and to bring it forth. For it is a light unto our path and a lamp unto our, our path, Father. Father, you are that light through your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray for Danny Conwell and a procedure that's going to take care of the take, place this next week. We pray, Father, for the doctors and for wisdom. Continue, continue to pray for Danny Luke, Lord Jesus, as, as he is so longing to come back to Walla Walla as he's in Tri-Cities, and he would love to worship with us, Father. And I just pray for Danny and ask 
the congregation, you lift him up in prayer. For Roy Scott, continued healing. Uh, I believe that the chemotherapy has ended. He was able to ring the bell, and he was able to, uh, it's now ended, and we continue praying for his healing and his, anno his just anointing of the cancer within his lung to be gone. For Seth, surgery, recovery, Lord, we pray for Seth. He's done some wonderful things helping us here around this church. Father, he, he's, I believe he so longs to come back with his kids and to be able to be a part of what you're doing here. Raise him up, Lord, I pray. Strengthen him. Andy Shaw, cardiac issues, Lord God, that you would just raise this man up who loves you, knows the word. And Father is a, a precious brother who joins us when he can. For Rebecca and Billy Noel, I'm so glad they're here this morning, Lord. And thank you for their smiles, for, for this, their, the love that is just radiates in their lives, even as they're in pain and hurting, Lord God. So too, they chose to be here this morning and to be with family. And I'm so thankful, Father. Lord Jesus, from Vicki Clements as she continues healing. Lord Jesus, from, from cancer, from the, the radiation and chemotherapy, would you just touch her right now? Lord Jesus, would you minister also to precious family this morning? Uh, Father, I just pray that you would just touch Matt and Ashley, Lord Jesus. I'm going to do something strange, Ashley, if it's okay. Ladies, I'm going to ask you to gather around Ashley. Ash is sitting right here in the center with her kids. I'm going to ask you to just lay hands on her. This precious sister just needs to be lifted up this morning and her husband Matt need to be lifted up there's a real battle going on in Ash is here this morning bringing her kids and just seeking the anointing and the touch of the Holy Spirit we cry out this morning Father for the Holy Spirit to fill to touch to move within this family Lord Jesus you are victorious. The enemy is defeated. And we are standing on the promises that will not fail. Lord God, sometimes it takes a mama. Sometimes it takes a wife to stand in the gap. And that's what Ashley's doing this morning. And so we pray for her and Matt, Father. They both love you with all their hearts. God, the enemy just keeps attacking as we all know that in our own lives and things that take place, Father. It doesn't seem like we can get rid of it, but you can, and we're going to continue believing, and we're going to ask, we're going to ask for freedom. We're going to ask in the name of Jesus that the demons of oppression be cast far from them, and Father, that the Holy Spirit will fill them to the overflowing. Cry out, it says. Cry out for the Holy Spirit, and that's what we're doing this morning for this precious family. I thank you for Aaron. 13-year-old young man who here with his mama this morning. God, and what a blessing he has been from the very minute I saw him sit on the edge of his seat telling his mama and daddy, I want to go back to church there. And Father, this young man growing up, I believe to break the curse that has been on and going for so many years, Lord Jesus, from the time Matt was little, from the time Ashley was a little girl, Lord Jesus, to be able to move forward. Body of Christ, thank you for that, for allowing me not to go into detail, but this precious family just needs you to just pray hard for them right now. And if you're going through a battle this morning online, here in the sanctuary, I just want to pray for you right now as well. And ask our living and loving God to reach down, to set you free from any type of addiction, to set you free from any type of, 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 of draw that the world is pulling on you and taking you back out. I'm asking in Jesus' name that the demons of oppression, the demons of anxiety, of addictions, in the name of Jesus, be cast forth now from each and every person who stands here this morning who says, I am a child of God and I will not bow to the enemy no longer. I am a child of God. And I know that I am in the cleft of his hands. And he has this and he has me. And I thank you, Father. And I praise you. And I worship you for the family of God here at New Beginnings Chapel. I thank you for the prayers that we can lift. And the hearts that can be 
brought before you, Lord God, believing and calling where two or three are gathered. There you are in the midst of them. And we thank you, Father, and we praise you, and we worship you. Pray, Father, for our military. Pray for our men and women who are on the streets every day. We pray for the men and women overseas and here at our lands who protect our freedom, who come before you, Lord God, believers, praying for the unbelievers, Lord Jesus. We pray for the country of Ukraine. We pray, Father, that the eyes of, of Russia, the leaders, be opened up and they realize the atrocities that they are doing. And in Jesus' name, be stop. Father, I pray that you would move powerfully upon our nation and we would again be a nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all, red and yellow, black and white, precious in your sight, Father God. That, Lord, we would be men and women who would stand and proclaim you as our God, that many will come to know you and make the decision to accept you as well. We'll be careful to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' precious name, amen. So let it be today, we shout the hymn of heaven. With angels and the saints, we raise a mighty roar. Glory to our God, who gave us life beyond the grave. Holy, holy is our God is good. Do you believe that statement? I'm not going to say the other one yet. God is good. You believe that? You believe that? Why is that? Because all the time, God is good. And I will, I will, I will proclaim that. I will declare that. And I thank you guys and gals for being here this morning. It is a joy to be back. Zaneda and I were talking before the service, and she said, you, you, just, you just seem to have this energy. I go, I know it's, all, it, it's, it, it's just been pent up the last couple of weeks, and it's really good to be back and to be able to worship with the body of Christ. We have some of our members who've come from the 1930s who, who are, 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 are I'm, I'm drawing attention to Bethany as if you're wondering, wow, that's really an interesting dress she's wearing today. That was ad-libbed. I had not planned that, but she was walking by, so I just thought I would say something. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, man. Zia, I had another cup of coffee. I hear it. I Oh, no. Oh, no. Let's try it there. 
How about there? Test one, two. There we are. OK, now we're on. OK. Wow. Um, Ms. Keilani, did we get any scriptures on the, on the screen? OK, so I don't need this. You all have uh, scriptures this morning. Uh, do you think there's a few of them for us? I want you to take these scriptures home with you and to take a look at them, because a lot of times we have them up here on the screen, and, and it, we go by them real quickly, and you can't write them down. And you can get my notes for my message, but I wanted to give these to you today because I really feel they're, it's, it's powerful and anointed. And we're coming from Hebrews 10, 1 through 10, and a powerful message that talks to us about stepping out of the darkness. Do you ever feel like you're just surrounded by darkness, even as a child of God? Do you ever feel it's just oppressing you and it's just coming down on you? You hear me say, greater is he that dwells within us than he that dwells in this world. Do you believe that? It can't be just a cliche statement that we say, but do you believe it? Do you believe that the, the gates, nothing can, the enemy cannot prevail. Not even the gates of heaven can prevail against our God. Do you believe that? We say several things in our, in our verbiage as Christians but do we believe it? Do you believe that you can be filled with the Holy Spirit to the overflowing? Do you believe you can stand in the gap for someone who is going through a trial and a situation? Do you believe that God is all-powerful and gives you the authority to speak against the enemy in the name of Jesus? These are things that we have to think about. These are things that we have to hold on to. And this morning, I'm going to invite you to stand with me. Read with me from your notes, Hebrews 10, 1 through 10. And it says, the law is only a shadow of the good things that are coming. Think about that. The law is only a shadow of the good things that are coming. What would that mean? Not the realities themselves. For this reason, it can never, by the same sacrifices repeated endlessly year after year, make perfect those who draw near to worship. If it could... Would they not have stopped being offered? For the worshipers would have been cleansed once for all and would no longer have felt guilty for their sins. But those sacrifices are an annual reminder of sins because it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Amen? Amen. It is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Therefore, when Christ came into the world, he said, from Psalms 40, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. With burnt offerings and sin offerings, you were not pleased. Then I said, Here I am. It is written about me in the scroll. I have come to do your will, O God. First he said, sacrifices and offerings, burnt offerings and sin offerings you did not desire, nor were you pleased with them, although the law required that these sacrifices be made. Then he said, here I am. I have come to do your will. And he sets aside the first covenant to establish this second covenant, everyone, by that will we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ. Can you say it with me? Once and for all. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the gift you have given us in your son who did not have his life taken from him, but laid down his life freely for the redemption of our sins. May we never take that lightning. May we never glibly think, oh, well, I'm a Christian, so I don't have to worry about sinning. We, Lord God, are in your presence every day. And if we're not, Lord God, we need to realize you know us from the very inner parts of our being, from before the foundation of this world. So, God, you do know us, and nothing is hid from you. And so this morning, Father, I pray your word will penetrate our hearts, speak to our very beings, and allow us, Lord God, to go from this place stronger, bolder, encouraged, lifted up to do your will, Father. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Turn to somebody and say, I am so glad you're here this morning. I'm so glad you're here this morning. God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. 
Man, were these Hebrew Christians, were they not getting it on both sides? Man, they were getting it from the, the Romans for being, for being Christian. They were getting it from the Jewish people. There was just a whole ton of stuff that was going on, activities, rituals, that these people who were, were, were coming down thought that the more you could do for God, the more he would love us. But the less you do for God, the less he was going to love us. That's legalism, guys and gals. That is legalism. There is nothing we can do to make God love us any less or any more. What do you say about that? There is nothing that we can do. Salvation is a gift of God that what? Cannot be earned. Amen. It cannot be earned. And I love that because that's the good news of the new covenant. So I want to touch on just a couple of, of points this morning and then how they apply to our lives in the practical applications. Number one, as you see on your notes, says animal sacrifices were only a shadow. Jesus is the reality casting the shadow. Now think about that for a second. Think about that statement. Animal sacrifices were only a shadow. Jesus is the reality casting the shadow the shadow. So what does that mean? We all know what shadows are, right? We all know what shadows are. I mean, if I stand in front of this light, you, you'll be able to see my shadow. But if you come up and you shake my shadow's hand, I'm going to think you're crazy. See, because the shadow is dead. The shadow is not alive. The shadow is not what you're seeing. A shadow is a dark shape cast on the ground in this definition. My wife said, what's, what's the definition of this? A shadow is a dark shape cast on the ground or object that occurs when a solid object intercepts a source of light. In order for a shadow to exist, you need two things. You need a source of light and you need a solid object. If you go into a totally dark room, no light, will you cast a shadow? No, because there is no light for that shadow to be cast from. You can go into a lit room fully, and if the solid object is not blocking the light, there's no shadow. So in this analogy, the source of light is God. The Bible says God is light. In him is no darkness at all. God is light. God is light. In him is no darkness at all. So I stand here this morning to tell you the solid object, the solid substance is Jesus Christ. And the shadow is the Old Testament system. Think about it. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is that solid substance and the shadow is the Old Testament system. The new covenant is about moving from shadow, hear me now, to substance. Moving some, from shadow to substance. God gave the Jews the shadow of the law, hoping that it would lead them to the light of Jesus Christ. Shadows are real. We know that. But as I said earlier, they are dead. When I look at the scriptures and I see the shadow of legalism more than the substance of the son of the living God, I realize there are people still living in darkness. People who, who don't want to claim that Jesus Christ is a son of our living God. And I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you something that came across my computer the other day. Uh, Brother Danny sent it to me, and it, it blessed my heart, but it broke my heart. Blessed my heart because people were identifying this, and they were standing up against it. Broke my heart because in September of 2022, the Catholic Church has now aligned itself with Islam and the Jewish faith. There is no mention of Jesus Christ. But you would think, well, the Catholic Church. 
No, what it is is it's three religions that are coming together so they'll get along because there has been a battle. But one thing that I don't think these others realize, there's one religion in there that re really believe that we are infidels and that we are the great Satans. And so if they can get themselves in to other religions, I can guarantee you you're going to see some really, really horrible things take place. But isn't that the way the word tells us in the last days? What's going to take place? What's going to happen? The very elect are going to be deceived. I don't want us to be deceived, guys and gals. I want us to stand on the promises that shall not fail. That's the loving power of Jesus Christ who gave his life on that cross for us over 2,000 years ago and still lives and reigns in our hearts today through the believers, through the faithful. Are you faithful? Are you standing? Are you grounded in, in the faith of Jesus Christ? Are you, are, you, are you tossed back and forth? Or do you stand up when someone says Jesus Christ isn't the Son of God? Let me tell you, Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God and He is alive and He is well and He's changing lives every single day. I know it because He did it in my life. And he continues to do it every day, even in the midst of the blockage that the enemy tries to throw at us. You are a child of God. We are not to give up. We are not to give in. We are to continue walking in the faith and believing because he will give us the strength and he will give us the courage and he'll give us the boldness to proclaim Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, now back to notes. As long as we're trying to please God by following a set of rules or rituals, we are still in the shadow of legalism. Do you agree with me? We're still in the shadows of legalism. Paul writes about this in Colossians 2. And I've often said to you, when you start reading the Bible and you get to therefore, therefore, read a scripture before that, because there's something getting ready, therefore, for each and every one of us to understand what's going to take place. So from Colossians 2.16, in your notes, you've got, therefore, don't let anyone judge you in regard to food or drink or in the matter of festival or a new moon or a Sabbath day. These, listen to this, are a shadow of what was to come. What was, not what has, what was to come. It's telling us in Colossians, the substance is Christ. The substance, guys and gals, is Christ. It's, it's the fact that part of the Jewish legalism had to do with a kosher diet. Long list of foods in Leviticus, oh my goodness, that were kosher, meaning clean, and those that are non-kosher. Can I tell you something this morning? I believe they were nailed to the cross. I believe they were nailed. We are no longer under the legalism of the law. The Jewish people had a holy day they called the Shabbat, which means rest. It was given as a divine principle of the need for living a healthy rhythm of work, rest, and worship. But isn't there still today a legalism on the fact that one day, is more holy than another day. I believe your Sabbath is every day for you're in the presence of God Almighty. Our rest is in Jesus. Amen? Our rest. I know of guys who have to work on Sundays. And they say, well, you're going to go to hell, brother, if you, don't, if you don't take that one day. Oh, my goodness. Saturdays are the only day. Come on. It's not the day. Because Jesus, Jesus wasn't made for the Sabbath. The Sabbath was made for Jesus. For you and for me as we walk this journey. Are we worshiping the day or are we worshiping the Savior? Are we worshiping our God or are we studying in the legalism and still bound by that shadow of that law? Number two is animal sacrifices had no choice. Jesus chose to offer his body. Amen? The animals had no choice, but Jesus chose to offer his body. You see, every animal sacrifice was a shadow teaching of the full truth of light that someone, someone has to offer for sin. Do you, do you agree with me this morning? The statement that says, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. People say, ooh, that's pretty gross. That's pretty gross. Ooh, blood sacrifices. There was such a, 
uh, a law back then. I mean, it was hundreds of thousands. I would say, Josh, it's probably more than hundreds of thousands. If we think of all the years that they did it, they said the blood ran in the streets when they had sacrifice. Do you think those animals that were killed by the priests, how many of you think volunteered for the job? How many of you think they volunteered for the job? I don't think any of them. Can you imagine the priest looking at the flock of sheep and asking, okay, who wants to be a sacrifice today? Not a one. Come on, step forward. You want to be sacrificed? They all stand there with sheepish looks on their faces. I know, it's pretty bad. I'm sorry, I just had to get that in, Josh. But Jesus was fully aware of the cost of redemption. He was fully aware, everybody, of the cost. And he chose. He chose. He gave his life. It was not taken from him. It was not taken from him. In John 10, Jesus said, The reason my Father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I receive from my Father. That is pretty powerful words. Pretty powerful fulfillment of the scriptures. Pretty powerful for you and for me to be able to take a hold of this and to apply it to our lives and to, to understand it and to abide in it as the word abides in you, so too you can abide in the word. The writer of Hebrews tells us, it was Jesus, ready for this, who said to God, you have given me a body and I have come to do your will. Think about that for a second. You have given me a body and I've come to do your will. That's what we celebrate at Christmas, isn't it? But we celebrated Christmas. Jesus Christ came as a baby in the form of a man. He took on human flesh in order to live among us. He needed a real body to live in, think, reason, and choose. And he needed a body in order to die, everybody. Could not have died on that cross without a physical body. I love the writings of Ray Steadman. And you hear me say uh, many of his quotes. He has been... Uh, physically dead now for many, many, many years, but his writings are very powerful. And here's what he said. When Christ came to earth, he paused on the threshold of heaven and said, a body you prepared for me. There in the womb of the virgin, a human body was being formed. It was a body with nerve, muscle, sinew, hair, and eyes growing through all the stages of a normal human embryo. And within that body was a human soul with the capacity to reason, feel, and to choose. A will, in other words. Have you ever thought about Jesus like that? That he, he took on the form of a man. He took on a form that felt and hurt and cried and laughed. You've all watched The Chosen, and it brings it down a little bit more to the human side of, of, uh, uh, of where we're at. And to be able to understand that, that he did feel as you feel. I think our passage reveals that Jesus' offering is superior because it took away sin once and for all. We should be saying, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, praise the name of our Lord. It took away the sin once and for all. Jesus also shows us the meaning of both complete and finished. And when he died on that cross, what did he say? It is finished. That was the moment our redemption. Our redemption was complete. I believe that with all of my heart. To put into the terms of theater, and I wanted to put this in here so you had this to be able to take home with you. The Old Testament could represent all of the rehearsals before the big play. During rehearsals, the actors discover their mistakes, but there was only one main event, and it was when Jesus died on the cross, and after that, there were no repeat performances. Amen? 
there were no repeat performances. The passage and the scriptures, they continually remind us. They continually remind us, announce that we have been made holy. The Bible says in Hebrews 10.10, 10, we have been made holy through what? The sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. I stand here to tell you, people think that once you've accepted Christ, uh, everything is going to be a perfect rose garden. There's not going to be any problems. There's not going to be any situations. Can I remind you, we live in a fallen world. We live in a fallen world, and the enemy wants to destroy the effectiveness of the man or woman of God. And that's why it is so important for you to be into the Word every single day so that the Word of God can be in you, so that you can stand in the midst of all of the trials which we are all going to go through. Some may be going through those trials right now that others are not going through. But I can guarantee you there will be a time when that loved one you're sitting next to or that parent or that child, one day we will all be gone, guys and gals. Some sooner than others. The heartbreak of loss. The heartbreak of loneliness. But if we've accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we know where we're going. Amen? We know where we're going. And the enemy wants to make us in this life feel that it's not worth living. Why not just give up? Why not just stop? This is not fun. He reminds us, the word reminds us, that our bodies are a temple of God. Our bodies are a temple of God. And, and, and last night as I went home, I was going to preach on, a, on a, another, I was going to talk on grounding, being grounded in the Lord. And, and, and roots that go down deep. But it laid on my heart that we need to talk about the fact that you and I are children of God and our bodies are a temple and we are holy in the sight of God Almighty and the enemy wants to defeat you. There's a whole vicious thing going on right there. And are you standing with the Lord or are you listening to the enemy that's trying to destroy you? I will say this again. I'll continue to say this. Greater is he that dwells within you as a child of God than he who dwells in this world. The power of the Holy Spirit. Are you crying out for the Holy Spirit? What? Why would I cry out for the Holy Spirit? When I accepted Jesus Christ, I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. I told you a, a message, shared you a message with you a couple of weeks ago that said all are baptized in the Holy Spirit. Then why in the world would it continue to say, cry out for the filling of the Holy Spirit? Cry out for the filling of the Holy Spirit. And somebody walked up to me and says, well, do you think it leaks out? No, I don't believe the Holy Spirit leaks out of us. I believe, do, do, do you understand love languages? Do you ever understand uh, some of you like to give gifts? Some of you like to, uh, the, 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 the gift of, of, of touch, of, of uh, what are they, Josh? Help me. Uh, come on, keep, come on. Uh, let, me, let me tell you something. Do you think your love tank gets empty? Oh, no, no, Rebecca, I think it does because we continue giving out. You can, Rebecca, when you're fixing a cheesecake, you shake your head no, so you set yourself up for this. You, you, fix, you fix cheesecake. You fix all the ingredients, right? You fix them all up. You bake that cheesecake. It is beautiful. It is wonderful. But you don't have anything left in the bowl. So in order to make another cheesecake, you got to fill that cheesecake bowl back up. And so what I'm saying to you guys and gals is sometimes... Sometimes, we, well, why would the Holy Spirit leave it? The Holy Spirit doesn't leave it. If you're serving God and you're giving out and you're continually doing what God has called you to do, you better be crying for the filling of the Holy Spirit over and over and over and over and over. Why in the world would Jesus have told the disciples to go to the upper room and wait and pray for the filling of the Holy Spirit? They've been in the presence of the Son of God. Why? Why? Because the Holy Spirit is a gift given to us. We are baptized in the Holy Spirit. Father, Son, what is it? Holy Ghost. Okay. So the filling of the Holy Spirit is a continuous thing. It's a continuous thing. Have you ever gone to a stream? I am so far away from my notes, guys and gals. Have you ever gone to a stream and you see fresh water flowing in? 
flowing in, flowing in, and it's flowing out. It's a beautiful, pristine stream. Have you ever come across a stream where there is water that is so stagnant and stinking that, and it's not flowing out, and it's nasty, and it's not giving out, giving out, giving out, and then if another water is coming in, it's overflowing its bank, and that stinking water is just infecting everything around it, and in the name of Jesus, you better be giving out the Holy Spirit. You better be allowing the Spirit to move through you and to speak through you and to make a difference, or you're going to end up having some stinking thinking. And stinking thinking is really stinking thinking. I have no idea where I'm at with my notes, but I'm coming back. I'm coming back. Oh, my. Do you believe Jesus died on the cross? Can I ask that one more time? Do you believe, really, that Jesus died on the cross? Well, I'm sure glad to announce that I believe it too. And I don't believe there's going to be any repeat performances. I believe that he has called us for such a time as this. The Bible says we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. I think holiness is a concept greatly misunderstood. Greatly misunderstood. People throw the word holy around without any idea of what it means. Holy cow! Holy mackerel, holy smokes, holy Moses. The only one holy in all of that was, was Moses. But In fact, if you, do you remember the Batman series back in the 60s? How many of you remember that? If, Aaron, if you raise your hand, buddy, I'm going to need to talk because Aaron's only 13, so it's not there. Um, Batman, oh, reruns. There are reruns, yes. Um, it's in syndication, I think they go. So, um, I hope you're bearing with me because we'll probably get done about 1 o'clock this morning and then we'll go eat dinner. Um, this, yeah. <laughs> Batman's sidekick was who? Robin. Boy, hasn't the Batman series through Marvel just become really dark? Oh, DC, it's not Marvel. Uh, that's why I have Josh up here in the front. He can remind me when I'm wrong. <laughs> um, what was it? Oh, oh, there was a, a guy, I think, who had way too much time on his hands, Cheryl, because he came to a discussion, a, a decision by his research. What was it? There were 367 different things that Robin called holy in the television series. And thank God it was G-rated back in the 60s. And so we had everything. What did, what did he say? He had, uh, oh, holy, holy agility. Batman? It's a holy zero, Batman. He called so many things holy that it just kind of flipped the meaning of holy, didn't it? It wasn't holy. None, none of this stuff was holy. The word holy carries the idea of being totally unique. Are you unique? Are you unique? I'm looking at some people like, yes, you are. You're looking at me and going, man, pastor, if you, we had any more unique pastor... We'd all be, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Bradley. You know, there are times when I cannot hear at all, but there are times I hear very clearly. So it carries this idea of being totally unique. Do you believe God is holy? Okay. Okay. Because there's no one like him, right, in this whole universe. I believe the word of God is holy. Do you believe it's holy? Because it's totally unique among all the books ever written. And we are holy, guys and gals, because we are different from those who do not believe Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. In Hebrews 12, we're told to pursue holiness... For without it, no person will see God. I wanted to make sure that scripture was in there. I want you to go back and look at these scriptures at a later time 
maybe this afternoon or this evening, and I, I got to go back to Precious Bonnie. Bonnie, you, you set the stage for this today because there were several times when I would give notes and, and, and you said, I just love it because I'm, I'm not able, we're, we don't have church at night, and so I take your notes from Sunday morning, and I hope that you'll go through them. I, I hope you'll take a look at these scriptures. You'll, you'll cross-reference them, and they will become a part of what you keep and go back because the scriptures are, are so pertinent to who we are, guys and gals, so pertinent to what we believe. Christian author Jerry Bridges stated on the topic of holiness, and I put this one in here for you too, I have sought to emphasize that holiness is a process. Isn't our whole walk with Christ a process? Isn't it a, a, a growth process? We, we don't get hit with a bolt of lightning, knocked to the ground, and stand up and go, okay, everything is just so cool. It's a process. Something we never completely attain in our lives. That's why we will always be pursuing as opposed to attaining holiness in this life. The word pursue means two things first. It requires diligence, and second, it's a lifelong task. It's a lifelong task. Okay, according to the Declaration of Independence, what does it tell us? That we have. What does it tell us that we have? It says life, liberty, and the pursuit. Not the attaining, the pursuit of happiness. But if you pursue happiness, you may not find it, and you may find it. But if you pursue holiness, you're going to find something far better. You find the joy of the Lord. He continues saying, God does not require a perfect, sinless life to have a fellowship with him. Do you realize that? You don't have to be perfect to have fellowship with God Almighty. You are going to slip. You are going to fall. There is a video that I just saw this last week of a fella who, who is um, uh, at a church, and it's talking about our, the process, if, if you can find it. It's so cool. He's got this trampoline down here below these stairs. And, and he starts out and starts out on life, and he bounces on the trampoline and lands on the step, takes a couple of steps, and then goes and turns, goes up. I mean, it's choreographed. It is phenomenal. And these, these steps are as high as the, the uh, oh, bigger, taller than our ceiling. And the trampoline is way down here. And throughout this whole thing, he is he is bouncing and taking a couple steps backwards and then, and then bouncing and then taking a, step, a couple steps forward and then bouncing and then, then going a little bit farther, but then bouncing and taking a couple steps back. Do you ever feel like that? Do you ever feel like we're taking steps forward, but then we're taking steps backwards? And But at the very end, he's just almost at the top and he takes falls off of this thing and lands on the, the trampoline, but because of the momentum that he has, he bounces back all the way up to the top of those stairs and he lifts his hands and he praises God. Are you in an attitude of praise? Are you in an attitude of, uh, of worship? Even when you're going through the garbage of this world, even when you're going through the trials that you don't understand, some of you feel like it's hell on earth. And it is at times. But glory to God, he sees us through, guys and gals. He has this in control and the palm of his hands. And we as believers have to believe this. We have to. Not because he twists our arm and says, you have to. We have to because the word of God, it, it gives us the light and the hope and the promise. And if you know the word of God, it's going to be a lamp unto your feet. Two desires we will possess when we pursue holiness. And Jesus wrote about his will and his body in this passage. And those two are the key to pursuing holiness. Practical truth. Because I am holy, I surrender my will to God's purpose. Think about that. Because I am holy, I surrender my will to God's purpose. Jesus revealed the cost of discipleship, everybody. He revealed the cost of discipleship. When he said 
to each one of them, if anyone would come after me, he must what? Deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. How's that working for you? How's that working? Take up your cross and follow him daily. Someone said it doesn't take much for a man or a woman to be a Christian. It doesn't take much for a man or woman to be a Christian, but it takes all we have, all we have to surrender our will to God. Would you agree with me? Surrendering our will to God. Have you surrendered your will to God? This is a good question for each one. Have you, if, you, if you've not, will you surrender your will to God? Do you think it's okay to say to the Lord, this is what I want? This is what I want. But then be sure to follow it up, but not my will, your will be done. What did Jesus say in the garden? Oh, Lord, if this cup can pass from me, but not my will, your will be done. Practical truth four, because I am holy, I offer my body for God's service. If you look at Romans 12.1 on your sheet, begins with therefore, we've got to go back a scripture before that, when in 11.36, for from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Now, let me read that one more time. For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in the view of God's mercy, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable, which is your reasonable, reasonable, or your spiritual act of worship. Okay. Rubber meets the road. There's still a sacrifice that God desires. What? There's still a sacrifice that God desires. He asks us, now hear me out on this, he asks us to sacrifice our bodies for him. But thank God, these aren't sacrifices of slaughter. Just wanted to clarify that. Our bodies are called to be a sacrifice, but not sacrificed by slaughter. He wants a living sacrifice, amen? Amen. He wants a living sacrifice. What do you mean, pastor? He wants our bodies to be available to him for service. Did you know that there was a Greek dualism going on at this time Paul was writing this statement? The popular thought was that as long as you kept a pure mind and heart, you could do anything you wanted with your body. Sounds like today, doesn't it? (laughs) Hey, I can do anything I want. It's my body. Hey, don't worry about it. The, um, there's, a, there's a philosophy that goes, I can do anything I want as long as it doesn't hurt somebody else. I have no idea what generations to come, your actions are going to affect the unborn. We certainly know by the actions of generations past what has affected the unborn babies of our time today and how we live our lives right now will affect the generations to come. I believe, you guys, our body is truly a temple of the Holy Spirit. He went against, Paul went against that that thinking, that philosophy that still is prevalent today, my body, I can do with it what I want. Paul really does attack this stinking thinking. This stinking thinking by saying, your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. And he wants us to sacrifice our bodies for his service wants to sacrifice our will for his service. Believers, holiness involves saying, God, I'm yours. My body is yours. Use my hands. Use my feet. Use my mouth. I come before you just as I am. How could God ever use me? Believe me. Can I say this honestly? I'm not being naughty or I'm not being glib. He spoke through a donkey. Let's just bring it down to rubber meets the road. He spoke through a jackass. Pastor, you said that in church. 
Well, if he spoke through a donkey, I am so thankful he can speak through me. <laughs> and he speaks through you in times you don't even know it. He speaks through you. He speaks through you. He speaks through you. He speaks through you, even though you think I'm not listening. He speaks through you. Because he knows. He knows. He knows. Guys and gals, we are children of Almighty God. We are pursuing holiness. We are pursuing his direction for our lives. Never, ever, 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 as Winston Churchill said to his troops, ever, ever give up. Don't ever give up. Why is that? We have the Holy Spirit that's going before us. Going before us. That's why it says cry out for the Holy Spirit. Cry out for the Holy Spirit. See, I believe the pursuit of holiness involves a daily and sometimes hourly surrender of our will to the will of God. Do you agree with me? Amen. Daily, sometimes hourly. Dear, sometimes minutely. When we don't understand why things are going on the way that they are, are you crying out to the Lord Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit when you don't understand it, when you can't comprehend what's going on, when you find yourself getting into an anger, a rage? Anybody ever done that? Anybody ever had your buttons pushed so bad? that you're beside yourself hearing yourself say things that you should never be saying. I love the heads that turn right looking at their spouses. I, you, you, you just, you, you don't realize. But the enemy is now getting a foot in. Will you stand firm on that? I'm, now I'm going to jump into the grounding, the rooting of who you are in Christ and how the word is taking place. Will you come back with scripture or will you swear at that person? Will you say words out of your mouth that should never come out of your mouth? Have you ever been there? Pastor has been. No. And by the way, can I reaffirm within your thinking, any pastor that tells you that he is perfect, please run. Because your pastor is farthest from perfect. And some of you have known me for many, many years, and you know I can be, I can, I can be pushed against the wall pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. But when I'm pushed to the point where I can't go any farther, I come out and the, the, the side of me that I, has that side of you ever come out that you just, you want to keep back? Mike, I love your saying, nah, never. Well, I'll stand here by the grace of God. I'm not on that hill. By the grace of God, he saved me through his son, Jesus Christ, many years ago. And this is a process. This is a process. If you'd have seen me as a teenager, you'd have never thought I'd have been your pastor. You wouldn't have wanted me to be your pastor. But thank God, Michael, it's almost like God has a sense of humor, doesn't it? Saves a wretch like me. Saves a wretch like me to proclaim the love of Jesus. To proclaim the love of Jesus. Johnny! You know what? Your jokes were the silliest jokes I have ever heard. But you know what, Johnny? Look up here at me. God used you in a very precious way a couple of years ago because everybody still remembers your jokes. Everybody still remembers that young man who got up and made AJ disappear. <laughs> Why do I call attention to that? Because, Johnny, you're in church today. And that blesses my heart. That blesses my heart. You could have been anywhere else today, but you chose to be in, well, or somebody chose for you to be in church. But you're here today, and that blesses my heart, to pursue what God has called for us for such a time as this. It, can, it requires a continual process of making our bodies available to God. Preachers often talk about giving God your time, your talents, and your treasures, right? Right? Your time, your talents, and your treasures. But in giving God your money, in giving God your time, and your, heart, your talents, you must also be giving God you. Think about that. We must be giving ourselves to God, guys and gals. A young man was in a service. 
and the offering plate was being passed. He came to him, and he had absolutely no money to put in that offering plate. The Lord impressed upon him, Lord, I, I, he said, I know you can't give, but you can give yourself. When that offering plate came by, he took that plate, set it down in the aisle, stepped into that plate, and said, here I am, Lord. I give you myself. Father, thank you for your word this morning. Thank you for your scriptures that speak to our hearts and to our lives and to our minds and to our spirit. I thank you, Father, for your presence in this house, and I thank you for your love, and I thank you for the gift of your precious Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit that takes residency in us, that gets us through the stuff we go through that we can't understand, Father. And it says, cry out for the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Seek diligently after the Holy Spirit. Because it's not going to stop with just one situation. It's not going to stop with just one promise that's broken. Are you a child of God? Is my question I'm supposed to ask you today. Have you surrendered your life to Jesus completely? Are you giving your all? Are you surrendering your will? Because things may not go the way you think they should go, but God will be glorified. We don't understand it, but God will be glorified. And the sacrifice of our lives surrendered to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Father. We love you today, Lord. And I thank you so much for the opportunity to preach this word today. It's you, Lord Jesus. It's all you. Because <laughs> I don't have the strength or the ability to bring this word forth as you did today. And I thank you for using this jackass to bring this message, Father. I thank you for the, the word that you can speak through even a So I guess what I'm saying today, if somebody is here and they just feel like, well, what good am I? You are a child of God. You are a child of God. Stand in that. Don't let the enemy make you think you're defeated. You're not. You're a warrior of the cross. You're a servant and an ambassador for the kingdom of God. You are called for such a time as this. You are placed in this time frame in order to be a light and the lamp, because that light and that lamp are shining through you. Let it shine brightly. Hide it under a bush. Oh no, I'm going to let it shine. Shine until my Jesus comes. I'm going to let it shine. Red and yellow, black and white, all are precious in his sight. I'm going to let it shine. I'm going to let that light shine. So don't you let the enemy, don't you let the enemy make you think that light is not there. If you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, and believe that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead, you are born again. And the process has begun. You may take two steps backwards, but you will take six steps forward because the Holy Spirit is leading you and has been given to you as a strength an encourager, a teacher, and he will not fail you. God has not failed us. Don't let the enemy make you think he has. Jesus Christ has not failed us. Don't you let the enemy make you think that he has. And the Holy Spirit will certainly not fail us, for he's been given to us and dwells within us, abides with us, and is calling to us to abide in him. This morning, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I invite you to step out from wherever you're seated. Step out and to say, I'm settling this with Jesus Christ right now. I'm settling this with my life right now. I am surrendering my heart to Jesus Christ because I want, I want Jesus to dwell within my heart. I cannot do a service, guys and gals, 
without that invitation. And so I invite you, I would be derelict in what God's called me to do if I do not make that opportunity for you. And if you don't want to step out from where you're seated, then I pray you'll pray this, this prayer of invocation, this invitation to say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Please come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. Take residency within my being. I surrender all to you right now. I give to you my heart, my mind, my spirit, and my soul. I come to you just as I am. And I believe if you prayed that prayer this morning, or if you have prayed that prayer, the angels in heaven are rejoicing. They are rejoicing. They are cheering. They are whooping it and hollowing it, raising their hands and rejoicing this morning. For that one who may be battling with where you're at in your relationship, you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, but it just seems like the walls of darkness are just closing in on you and you're in this big, deep hole. I believe right now in the name of Jesus, the light is shining down upon you and saying, my child, I have not left you. I have not abandoned you. I am here. I am here as Peter took a hold of Jesus' hand on that lake. He lifted him up, and together they walked back to that boat together. And the Lord Jesus Christ is not abandoning you in the middle of that river, in the middle of that lake. He is there. He's saying, I'm here. I have not left you nor forsaken you. You are still a child of God. Let's look to higher ground. Let's look with spiritual eyes. Let's see what God is allowing to be done right now in your life for you to become that man, that woman of God that he has called you to become. Set free, grounded, rooted, and growing as a child of God because of the tree of life. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your presence. Be careful to give you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor. In Jesus' precious holy name, amen. Amen. Do you know what? God loves you. God loves you. Rebecca, bake as many cheesecakes as you possibly can, girl. Order them up. Oh, then that means if somebody were to come and talk to you about Jesus Christ, you would continue telling them about Jesus just like those cheesecakes. Just like parts in, a, in an auto parts store. You may think I'm done, guys and gals. Sit down, Caden. In the parts, in the <laughs> you're not at the parts center. But remember when you were at the parts center, people would come and order more and more, and you'd have to get them in. It's a continuous filling. Cry out for the Holy Spirit, guys and gals. Be filled with the Holy Spirit to the overflowing. May the Lord bless you keep you. Can you tell I missed you guys? Can you tell I'm, I, I believe we are called together for such a time as this? Can you thank our worship team? What a precious job they did this morning as we worship the Lord. To everybody watching online, I wish you could stay for dinner. We're going to have a powerful pot blessing going on. And if you don't know what a blessing is, it's because all the food is blessed because there's no luck in it. These people know what they're doing. They know what they're, they're, they're preparing. And for all of you who are here in the sanctuary, I pray that you will, you will join us downstairs. Fill that big room. It didn't bring food. There's plenty of food down there. My wife gets after me and says, tell them to go get some more food. Okay, if you want to go get food, go get some food. Come back. We're going to start at what time, okay? It's 5 after 10, 12 now. So what, what time? 1230? 12.30, everybody. We'll be joining down here in the fellowship hall. Lord bless you and keep you. Make space to shine upon you. Give you peace until we're all together again. Go in the glory of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And you better get out of here right now or I'm going to start preaching one more time to you. Hallelujah. (laughs) And keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you.
shine upon you, be gracious to you. 